All righty. So Six Flags and Cedar Fair are about to merge. We are just over a week away from the two companies combining into a mega corporation. Um, July 1st, the two companies will combine. And I thought this was the perfect time to come out and kind of reveal the little details that I do know um, about the merger and what impact this might have on all the parks in the chain. So I'm going to provide you with a very short video about what I know so far. Um, but I do want to start that off with, please take this video with a grain of salt. Um, I do trust where this information has come from. Um, I've had some great conversations with people at various parks and some of my sources. Um, and I'm going to discuss what I currently know of what this merger means. So let's start it off. Will this merger have any immediate impact on any of the Cedar Fair parks and Six Flags parks? The simple answer is no. You will not notice anything in 2024. There'll be no name changes. There'll be no uniform changes. There'll be no branding changes at any of the Cedar Fair or Six Flags parks. Now, you might start to notice a little bit of some marketing in terms of maybe the new company Six Flags' name will be strapped onto any marketing that comes out therefore after this merger on July 1st, but nothing of importance. Will there be a new season pass offered when the merger takes place? No, there will not. Um, there most likely will not be a new season pass for the 2025 season um, as well. It's going to take some time for the company to start making some executive decisions with their new board. Um, so with that as a topic of discussion right now, for those of you that might not know, um, Cedar Fair is retaining about 95% of its current leadership role um, of this new company. So the only two higher execs that are moving over from Six Flags into higher positions at the new Six Flags company is the CEO and the VP of operations at Six Flags. So those two are the only people joining the board of directors and the important people in the really high up positions. Um, and for those of you that might have forgotten, uh, the whole point of this merger is Six Flags was looking for leadership. Six Flags was looking for Cedar Fair style leadership to be more direct. This isn't something that I'm saying as a Cedar Fair fanboy. This is something Salem has stated in press releases about the merger itself. He is looking for Cedar Fair style investments in the Six Flags portfolio. So that is some key information as the way Cedar Fair has been running their parks is how the company is going to be running the entire portfolio. Um, which truthfully to me doesn't mean anything. I have not seen Six Flags work with any manufacturers in recent years that Cedar Fair also isn't working with. So do I think we're going to see any sort of major changes to any investments that we currently have been seeing coming out of Six Flags and Cedar Fair? No, I really don't. Now, there is one really big plus to this merger, um, and that is the ability to spend more money on investments. Yes, there's a lot more parks under the new Six Flags umbrella, but there's a lot more power in terms of borrowing money um, and the ability to spread that money amongst its portfolio. So I strongly um, believe and have heard that there will be much larger investments at some of their key parks like Magic Mountain, Kings Island, Cedar Point, Canada's Wonderland, Knott's Berry Farm. Um, and some of the other larger Six Flags parks like Great Adventure. Um, that park is going to need uh, a lot of investments, actually, from what I've been hearing. Great Adventure is one of the parks that Six Flags was kind of looking at in terms of Cedar Fair coming in and saving. Now, I don't know too much, and I don't want to spread any false information, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've been hearing, Six Flags Great Adventure is one of the parks that have had a little bit of a struggle coming out of the COVID years. And it's it's a major park uh, to the Six Flags portfolio. So it is a park that I strongly believe will see a lot of investments coming out of this new company 
as they look to make it a major player in the amusement industry again. I also believe that parks like King's Dominion will see some larger scale attractions. Cedar Point. Um, Knott's Berry Farm is unfortunately one of those parks that is super landlocked, so there's not too much they can do there other than enhance what they already have, slash removing older product and replacing it, um, and Magic Mountain. So there are some parks that I'll go into more details about what I think is going to happen, but for the most part, for the enthusiast community, I really do believe this is going to be a really good thing for us regional pass holders that have major regional parks near us as our home parks. Um, they're going to be looking to compete with the smaller parks now. And when I say smaller parks, I don't mean actual smaller parks, but in terms of company branding, like Hershey Park, um, the Hershey brand, all those parks that, you know, the new Six Flags Umbrella is going to be looking to make their parks close to those parks um, a major staple, like where people are choosing to go to those um, because of the past perks um, and the ability to drive guests in with the powerhouse that they have in terms of borrowing, um, lending, and stuff like that. Outside of that, um, again, uh, do I think there's going to be a season pass for 2025? No, there's a small chance it could be, but it won't be the final pass. It'll be like a test. 2026 is the year that I have heard that you'll start to see some of the the benefits and the decision-making power um, taking shape uh, with the new company. So expect to see things starting in 2026, possibly even 2027 um, when it comes to branding. From what I've been told, parks in the Cedar Fair chain, the very the top five parks, will not rebrand at all. It is in Cedar Fair's best interest to not rebrand their top five parks at all. Um, I have heard that some parks have been exploring whether the Six Flags name could help them uh, in any form. So when I discuss that, I'm talking about Six Flags, no matter your opinions on the brand, has a stronger name than Cedar Fair. People think of Six Flags and know Six Flags the name a lot more than Cedar Fair the name. So some of the smaller scale parks might benefit from using the Six Flags name. So that's something we could see. I've also heard parks like Canada's Wonderland, and this is the first time I'm saying this outside of Patreon, are exploring using the Marvel name as a benefit in some areas and some other names that they might have access to now. Um, I've been told that you might want to look at the Kids Fest event at Canada's Wonderland as it is a huge success for the park. And now that they have Six Flags under the umbrella, they're able to actually utilize some of those um, those branding corporations and LP inside the park. So there are talks about utilizing some of that at even a park like Canada's Wonderland. And if that's the case, that means other parks as well under the Cedar Fair brand might start stepping outside of the Snoopy theme in certain areas uh, to uh, help kind of like generate a new fan base. So. For example, I'll use Canada's Wonderland because it's my home park as an example. Um, the Kidsville area is a is a great place to maybe retheme that area into a different LP that's now uh, able to be accessed and attainable through the new Six Flags Corporation. So that's what I've been hearing through the grapevine and from very trusted sources, but obviously take that with a grain of salt. Um, outside of that, um, this will have no impact on 2025 investments from what I've been told. So you can calm down there. Um, and this will have no impact on any season pass sales that are going to be launched in August. So to me, that means the 2025 season season passes will not be impacted at all. One major thing that I want to talk about that's a little more on the boring side of things for some of you enthusiasts is the ability that this gives the six Fl new Six Flags company um, as a whole. So for example, let's say you know, you have parks like Cedar Point, Kings Island, and Canada's Wonderland that kind of fall under the same weather pattern um, in terms of weather moving through the area. If it's raining at Cedar Point, it's most likely going to rain at Canada's Wonderland that same day or the next day or the day before, um, as well as Kings Island. 
This uh, gives the company a lot more power in terms of having major parks in outside regions and a much larger portfolio where on certain bad weather days, they still have larger scale parks that are holding up the, the, the company in terms of attendance and um, spending um, as well as average ticket that day. So I just wanted to talk about that. I know it's a little more on the, the boring side. Um, on a more exciting note, a lot of people have been in the comment section of my videos being like, well, does this mean that, you know, uh, Wonderland will work with Intamin? No. Again, as I talked about earlier, um, Cedar Fair is going to be making a lot of the decisions under this new company. So whatever they've been currently doing is what they'll continue to do with just a lot more power behind their words. So when they're going to buy attractions, again, they have a lot more ability um, to take out loans, um, to spend more. Um, and obviously companies are going to bow down to them a little bit more than they currently are in terms of kind of giving them discounts um, and wanting to do really good because this is a huge portfolio of parks. Um, so if you piss off this new brand, uh, you're, you're kind of losing out on a lot of ability to sell products in North America. So I just want to discuss that a little bit. I believe, I, I really hope, I've been sick. So if I've left out any information, I'm sorry that I know. Um, but I just wanted to go over that. So key points, won't notice any changes right away. Um, the top five Cedar Fair parks won't notice any branding changes with the Six Flags name in the company name. So Six Flags Canada's Wonderland, stuff like that. You won't see that. Um, you will see different LPs entering some of the Cedar Fair parks outside of Snoopy. Um, that I can put my strong backing behind. Will you notice it right away? No, obviously. It takes some time to do those investments. Um, I have been warned that, you know, uh, the park is already eyeing Marvel or something already at Kids Fest that is doing well that they're able to access now through the Six Flags um, branding. So Wonderland's already looking um, to that. So that's significant news. Um, but yeah, outside of that, I believe that's everything I know so far. Again, you will notice a change to uniforms, whether that's in 2025 or 2026. Um, that's all I've been told. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll try and get you an answer or provide what I currently know on that situation or that question that you're asking. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.